The largest organism on Earth, you told your mum, is a species of pathogenic fungus known as honey fungus. Now affectionately dubbed the humongous fungus, it is roughly the size of 17,000 football fields or 3.55 million potatoes. But more importantly, this 8,000 year old godless behemoth is living proof that humans are some sort of top of the food chain superior beings? No, we're submissive, genetically modifiable capitalists. Funk are the secret rulers of a planet, and I'm ready to surrender myself to any sci fi apocalyptic scenario that will involve these guys taking over. In this video, I explain why. Let's start with the basics. What is this? What does it do exactly? When you go on a walk, it's almost etiquette to stop and acknowledge any mushrooms you come across. Like, hey, wow, it's a bunch of little guys growing from the dirt. Yes, the mushroom motif is somewhat worshipped by millennials who have colored hair. But most people just think of fungi as food. And on that note, why is there a mushroom in my vegetable fried rice, Leonard? Sheldon, please. Mushrooms are not vegetables, Leonard. Sheldon, no, I refuse to eat this unprincipled and misleading Chinese dish. Bazinga. Fungi are not plants, they do reproduce like plants, but comparing this almighty transcendent being to a freaking cabbage is disrespectful to our future overlords. Because mushrooms actually have more genetically in common with animals than they do with plants. And also, the mushroom itself is literally and figuratively just barely scratching the surface of fungus intrigue. Because we're used to thinking of this as being a mushroom. And it is. But we ought to think of a mushroom as something a bit more like this. This here is called the mycelium, which is basically the brain part. Now the mushroom is essentially just a reproductive organ. Next time you want to tell a vegan to go eat a dick, consider the fact that it's often their first choice regardless. Anyway, underneath the soil we can observe a sort of network of thin threads called hyphae, which might look like poor cable management to our inferior brains, but fungi are as good at planning their networks as a team of Japanese railway engineers. No cap. Haha, <laughs> get it? Okay, this network is pretty much the only thing holding nature together. And it's basically an idyllic society. I'm talking Karl Marx pissing himself over a can of Tesco's butter mushrooms idyllic. The networks are really just out there decomposing dying organisms and redistributing the nutrients throughout the colony and the surrounding ecosystem with no financial incentive. That's whack. Fungi operate in a realm of pure economic communication that is based in the greater good. It's what mushroom nerd William Padilla Brown says about the fungal network. And how mushrooms do that is through the hyphae, which use patterns of electrical impulses to spread information and misleading gossip across the mycelial networks. Like, hey, Nima told at 12 o'clock. What's it just a bit further up ahead? Pete Davidson is dating someone again. Nitrogen at 3 o'clock. It may or may not be another Kardashian. This communication within the fungal network was proven recently when this other nerd stuck electrodes into the mycelial networks and observed their responses to different stimuli. With this experiment, he was able to discover that the fungi's responses were similar in structure to electrical impulses in an animal's brain. But unlike animals, they have a deep understanding of what makes the natural environment thrive and they support everything around them, says yet another cute mycologist, Jasper Dagonas. Like, Damn, what are they feeding those boys? Mushrooms, I guess. <clears throat> Fungal mycelia consciously react to the environment and other creatures and have spatial reasoning and even short-term memory. They are definitely conscious and definitely intelligent. They're just in a whole different dimension than we are, explains Nicholas P. Money. Which is why I now fully believe anyone who claims to have discovered the true meaning of the universe during a mushroom trip. And here's the thing. It's not just within the network. Peter Vaux had been first coined the term Wood Wide Web, which sounds like a seedy porno website, but it actually refers to the fact that the mycelia is also how trees communicate with each other like, Hey bestie, I am dying. There have not been enough nutrients for me. Don't worry bestie, I got you. Nom 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 nom. Thanks. I am now thriving. 90% of all plant life depends on fungi for its survival and so do we. They've been evolving on Earth for more than a billion years and were once the dominant species on our planet. Fungi are also able to thrive in any environment, both inside and alongside plants and animals, as well as synthesize chemical compounds for their own designs. For example, the enzymes they use to digest rock and create literal soil. But Dear Brown sees fungi as the ancient intelligent designers of Earth's ecosystem. He says, We know that when a pathogen threatens a mushroom or its symbiote, fungi will create an antibiotic to get rid of the pathogen. We also know that they farm yeasts and microbes for themselves, and if you take that understanding back hundreds of millions of years, 
You can understand that as life was first evolving, fungi were choosing the single cell organisms that got to stick around. So when we look at the forest today, they are composed mostly of fungal decisions. I'd like to see how a carrot could do that. Now, there are plenty of sci-fi horrors born from the concept of ant zombie fungi, but considering all this, will they take over? No, because they already have.